Well, we're back for another video, and uh, it's Mother's Day today. So, we're going to do a bit of jewellery, and we're going to do something with this. And this is going to go to my senior financial advisor, aka my mother. So, uh, we also have something to go with that. I managed to procure myself some silver bullion. So, I've got a few answers of Australian silver bullion. And we have um, some leftover American silver bullion that I used to the last project, which was also purchased from my senior financial advisor at a slightly inflated price, so that uh, it's an excuse to give us some money anyway. Because people, for some reason, are notoriously uh, funny about receiving money sometimes. Anyway, I already have the plans drawn up for this. I've had them drawn up for months. In fact, over a year now. So uh, I'm going to go out to my laser cutter, I'm going to cut out an MDF master, and I have a few ideas on how we're going to do the rest of that. So let's get straight into it. Okay, we're out in the workshop, and while things are warming up, I'm going to explain a couple of things. I'm going to take a different tack. Last time I made a master like this, and I did a two-part mould with Petrobond casting sand. This time, I think I'm going to fill this mould that I used previously going to pack it down with my master in the top this is an old master from a different model and uh, I'm going to put a graphite sheet on the back of it now excuse the absolute chaos that is my shed but I have some graphite sheets somewhere over here I found my graphite sheets my plan is is to pack one of these on the top here and drill a hole through it and pour through that and that'll keep the back nice and firm It'll be heat resistant and shouldn't gas off too much. Um, it isn't going to strictly fit the mold, but I'm doing this on a bit of a short time frame today. Hence why I don't have four or five cameras running. I'll only probably have the one camera running when I do the pour, but we'll see how we go. It should be relatively entertaining. You'll have to excuse the, uh, the background noise um, from the fan. This is uh, my design diagram here. Um, and we're going to go with this one. Now normally what I would do is I would use this bit of hatching here to have it do an engraving pass and just in depth it a little bit. But I have a different idea. I'm going to cut the whole thing out and I'm going to shave that bit off separately and then glue it back in. So that's the bit we want today. We're going to delete the rest of all of these and uh, we're just going to plot this one. Alright, let's get that set up and sent to the laser. Alright, so this has come over to the laser. We're going to cut this out of white acrylic today. Um, normally I would use MDF, um, but uh, for various reasons I'm going to do use this stuff today, largely because it uh, doesn't stick to that casting sand anywhere near as bad. Um, so we're only doing vector mode today, so we're going to drop vector mode back a little bit um, and cut it nice and cleanly through. Minimize the amount of finishing I've got to do on my master. Alright, now we'll shut this down. I've got to hook up my airline and get air assist happening. Actually, I had a change of mind. I've got some uh, acrylic offcuts kicking around. We're going to use that um, because I can see through it. And it's also the same thickness as the uh, MDF I plan to use. Let's go uh, autofocus here. Should bring it down to our autofocus pin here which is a little bit bent, I have to straighten that up. That should uh, touch that pin and stop there. Okay. Okay, I really need to get a better regulator for this, but I'm gonna crack this open just a little bit, get a bit of air going. And uh, now we're gonna hit our start button. And uh, we should cut away in here. You probably can't see it. But there's our laser doing its thing. It shouldn't take very long at all to cut something this small. I could probably be done by the time I'm finished talking. Alright, here's our master. If I cut it right, it should pretty well just drop straight out. Okay, let's uh, move this on over. We'll see if it fits our gem. Now, I haven't brought any of my tripod gear, so excuse me if the camera angle is a little bit out of whack. We'll drop this piece out of here. Let's see if our gem fits. Otherwise, adjustments may be in order. Okay. That fits nicely and there's a little bit of room which is fine because there will be um, a bit of shrinkage. And what we're going to do is we're going to shave this bit down uh, probably on the belt sander 
and we're going to glue it back into this to create the recess. Still got a long way to go yet. Alright, I'm going to come up in zoom a little bit here and move everything up. I'm going to take a Q-tip here and I'm actually going to uh, snip it off with my flash cutters to make a point. And uh, this is a technique I used to use uh, when I do hearing aid repairs. I would get a little puddle of super glue here which on the wax paper should uh, ball up very nicely. And uh, we'll dip a little bit of this in here and we'll run a bit around the edge of this. Just very gently. We don't need a lot. This is just being a master. And we'll drop this over here. Run that around. I know my autofocus is having a bit of a heart attack over all of this. Um, we are going to stick to the wax paper. That's a pain. Well, we'll sit that in here. We'll leave it go for a bit and see if it holds together well enough to do the job. Alright, so we should have something semi-useful now. It is partially dried. Let's have a look here. So it looks a bit messy, but this is the master. We'll clean up the final product. So um, you can see here I've got a nice little step in there, which is probably about one millimeter, uh, or about one and a half maybe. Hopefully this uh, comes out alright in the uh, casting sand. Now, it's when we get to this point that most people would be tempted to try and fire up the furnace. Um, I know better because uh, that just adds pressure to me to perform and uh, sometimes I don't perform all that well. Anyway, we've got casting sand we want to crumble up here and get the lumps out of. One of the other reasons I'm not doing a two-part mould with this is I don't have enough to fill up the two-part mould I got. I have to buy more of it. Um, and I'm trying to recycle as much of this as I can now um, it will be interesting to see if I can get this packed in well enough to do what I want to do we might squash it in like that and then tip the rest of this off hopefully that leaves enough of an impression Shave a bit off the sides here. Well, that's gone in all right. I'm hoping just by sitting this on here, it'll let enough air come out the bottom. Um, it's a bit of an experimental idea. I don't know if it'll work, but anyway, let's uh, let's drill this graphite. If you're wondering how I'm going to get the metal through that hole, I'm going to cover it up with blue tack. This surprisingly puts up with brass and silver and all that when it's molten. This is simply going to sit on top. I don't know how well it's going to work, but uh, we're going to try it anyway. Now to get this part of the mold out, I've decided I'm going to roll some of this stuff back on itself. This is really sticky stuff. And uh, I'm having a bit of trouble actually doing it with my fingers. This should get the master out if I've done it right. Should be able to stick on like that and lift straight out or not. <laughs> All right. Okay, Look, that's good enough. 
I'm not going to mess with it any further. We're going to pop this bit over the top of that. We're going to sit it there. And from now on, we don't touch it. So uh, now we're going to warm up the furnace, which means we're going to swap plugs around. So we'll be back in a minute. Now this is probably altogether far more silver than I need, but I want some of that hydraulic pressure. Oh, <laughs> that's going to jam in there just slightly. So we might have to, uh, to bend that up. All right, so my mini desk vise and my Leatherman to the rescue. Wow, autofocus is out, out of whack today. All right, let's uh, get you up here and slide you in. All right, now I go and find all my tools while this warms up. This is gonna take about half an hour, so I'll cut back to when we're ready to pour. All right, we've just clicked over to a thousand degrees. Could be getting there soon enough. All right, just heard the relay click and that says it's getting up the temperature. Dipped my test rod in and it come out with a little bit of silver on it. So that means it's molten. Time to get my camera set up. All right. Nothing on the floors burning. We're doing good. All right. Oh. Get out of the fumes of this for a minute. And we'll leave it go. Get this stuff off for the moment. Put it over there to cool. This is obviously going to be stuck to the other side. Well, it's come out relatively well. Um, I haven't got to the block of silver quick enough. So it might end up that I have to actually bust out the, um, might have to bust out the bloody graphite, but that's all right. For the one off, that's all right. And it's going to be done in time. And the step has come out beautifully. Ah, this is going to come out very nicely. All right. So the good old hacksaw did the trick. And, uh, this has actually come out really nicely. I think uh, adding in that bit of Australian silver definitely made a difference to the end sheen on this. So uh, yeah, I'm going to find some flush cutters, get this little knob cut off, and then I'll start to sand this down. But before I do that, I'm going to go check if the gem fits it. Alright, let's see. Try and get autofocus in here. Ah, it's going to sit in beautifully. Right, so if you imagine that, but shinier, and that's what we're going to end up with. That's going to look really good. All right, I'll go and find my flush cutters, and uh, we'll keep going. This should be should come out relatively nice if I do it right.
should be a bit shinier now. Camera never makes it look good. It always makes it show up all the scratches. But I think that looks all right. I'm gonna take it inside and run it past uh, my senior financial manager, not my financial manager, not my senior advisor. And I've decided to uh, leave some of the imperfections in on the side here, because I feel that kind of gives it some character. It definitely looks handmade. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna polish all this stuff out. I've got to drill the hole in the top first, so I'll do that in a moment. And then we might almost be up to putting the gem in. We're back again, and uh, we're in the office, the desk, the workshop. I've got to develop official names for these. I'm using a bit of isopropyl alcohol here that helps dissolve the uh, the wax and stuff that I use in the buffing compound. All right. So before I get going with the epoxy, I'm going to hit it up with a silver cloth first. Um, get the maximum shine because it gets to be very difficult to get a shine on the front once that gem's in there. Jeez, it makes a difference. Look at that. That's looking more professional now. All right. Mixing up some epoxy here. We kind of missed the whole boat with seeing me get that out of the tube. Now let's get this gem out. Oh, and drop it on the floor. To drop very carefully into here and we are going to push in just gently I haven't bothered to align the camera view so um, I'm sorry if that's not strictly centralized all right so this is my silver wire collection it's a few loops I've made in the past but I think I'm gonna make a larger diameter loop this time now I'm going to use um, 60 40 tin lead solder here not recommended I would get some silver solder I must go and buy a roll of that at some point but that's just a tiny bit just to hold that loop in place there okay so I don't want to put another fingerprint on it I will give it a final polish before it gets to its end destination but um, let's see if I can spin this around here I have a good look at it it's not quite the finish I'd like, and cameras always show all the scratches, but I'm sure from the dis distance this will look right. I have left some of the imperfections in here, um, largely because that adds a bit of character, I guess, and it's a bit less work for me. Uh, anyway, nobody seems to mind when it's a, it's a gift like this. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we go with it. And uh, the opal doesn't show up so much on camera but it does have some nice colors and blues and greens that come out of it in the right light but everything is under LED here and it's all cool white so it doesn't always show up those colors as well as it should but anyway this is our end product I'd give you a thumbs up but I can't fit it on the screen this is going to be my uh, thumbnail so hope to see you in the next video hope it was fun and uh, we'll see you in another video